Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. We appreciate you joining us here today. Well, we're back with a, another pistol video for you, and uh, thought we would kill two birds with one stone by addressing a couple of different requests. Uh, I've had some people asking about Springfield products. Um, Want to see some of those get looked at, and I've also had some people ask about some uh, 40 Smith & Wesson concealed carry firearms, um, of which I've carried many myself. So we thought today we would address that with the Springfield Armory XD40 Model 2 Subcompact. This one's an FDE. I've had some people say that we know with the Hellcat, with the smaller platform, uh, competing with the SIG P365 and the Glock 43s and things of that nature, is there even a place for the XD40? Um, and the answer might surprise you. And we're going to cover all of that, including all the features of this firearm, in just a minute. All right, and once again, welcome back. We really appreciate you being here today. If you're joining us for the first time, or if you've been watching our videos and you haven't had the opportunity to do so yet, We'd sure appreciate if you could locate that little button there in the lower right hand portion of your screen. Hit that subscribe button for us. And if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. It'll let you know whenever we do something new. All that really helps us out and we really do appreciate it. So, Springfield Armory XD40 Model 2 Subcompact. Well, I've had a lot of 40 caliber pistols personally in my day um, for various reasons, duty weapons and uh, um, backup weapons. And uh, so a lot of my um, personal carry weapons end up being 40 caliber weapons too. And matter of fact, I didn't even own a nine millimeter pistol until many, many, many years of gun ownership. I had almost exclusively 40 caliber and uh, 45 ACP pistols. And uh, I've always liked the 40 caliber round, and uh, and these days, um, a lot of people, for a lot of reasons, different agencies have moved. Uh, some are moving back to 9mm, different standards are changing for some people, and so you don't see as many 40s. Um, and that's fine for me, because I can go snatch them up, you know, at the stores when nobody else wants them, and uh, that's just fine with me. But uh, looking at this guy right here, we always like to start off with a little comparison, and... Uh, what I compare this with might actually surprise you. Um, so, if you're familiar with the Glocks at all, of course, you know the baby Glocks here. And uh, the small 40 is the Glock 27 here. Now, take a look at this. Okay. Now, obviously, these are not the exact same size. There's going to be some variances. But the, the comparison, I always like to do a comparison um, with a gun that's going to, you know, feel about the same and occupy about the same space in a holster, if you know what I'm saying. That's why we do this kind of comparison. In this case, um, with the standard magazine, they also hold the same amount of ammunition, which is 9 plus 1 of uh, 40 Smith & Wesson. But if you look at them, they're pretty similar as far as slide, trigger guard area, and even the grip. Obviously, you got a little bit more grip on the Springfield and as you come over the top here and take a look you can see that they're very similar in length and in width now where it's going to change up a little bit is going to be the height here when you look at the grip if you look down the sight and then follow the down you'll see that it's got a longer grip on the XD but with the standard magazine that's not too much larger um, than the Glock and the weight is, you know, almost identical. So if you're going to carry these, if you've carried a Glock 27 before, um, that's a real ideal size to get an idea of what this is going to feel like um, when you carry it on you. So let's go ahead and talk about the features. So this is a, obviously a polymer frame, um, striker fired, um, 40 Smith & Wesson. Um, we'll, of course, do our normal safety checks here. You can see the magazine is removed and empty. 
and you look on the inside here you can see that the feed ramp and everything is empty on the inside so you know we're safe and we're clear the standard capacity for this is as you can see it's a nine round magazine um, so nine plus one is your standard capacity um, they also give you a 12 round magazine here the extended magazine and when you add this the grip gets significantly better now people have different opinions about whether these extended magazines are a good idea in your carry gun or not um, for me I've got a fairly good size hand but this is one of those guns where my pinky hangs off the bottom now I've mentioned this before on other guns uh, things like the P30SK as long as it has these finger grooves to where you can get a good solid grip with those two fingers I'm not really that concerned about the pinky so for carry I am probably more inclined to actually carry the the flush magazine and I'll keep this magazine obviously as my backup so if I need my second magazine I'll go to this one but um, this is probably the magazine that just me personally I would carry most time by default and I've carried it both ways and um, I was perfectly comfortable holding and you know gripping and firing the gun this way and we'll cover that in the range but um, it does make quite a difference and how it feels and if you're one of these people that absolutely needs all three fingers then the 12 round magazine um, would be the way you want to go all right we're moving right along so looking at the firearm you can see that and this is in no particular order we we're talking about the grip um, if you look at the trigger and the grip here um, they've got what's called the uh, the XD has this grip zone here where you hold the weapon um, and you've got a grip safety here in the rear now if you look at it this trigger you have a trigger safety so if I try to move the trigger back without the trigger safety it does nothing so I engage the trigger it still goes back but it doesn't go back far enough to do anything when you have the grip safety engaged and all three go back well then the weapon of course will fire so it's an interesting little system they've got um, as far as your safeties with your trigger safety so that's a good uh, safety feature for people who don't like you know t uh, drop down style manual safeties on their guns um, a grip safety is not a bad way to go obviously if you shut a uh, a real 1911 there are some other guns also that have grip safeties but so there's that so your magazine release here you may notice it's pretty prominent now they've they've set it and if you look here from the side you can kind of see the you've got that little beveled area that's raised so it sticks out just a little bit but as you can see here it is ambidextrous so that's kind of nice you can drop your magazine with either finger and it's very easy to manipulate no problem there um, you've got your takedown lever for disassembly and of course you got your slide stop um, you do have an accessory rail for if those of you who like to put lights and lasers on your firearm you have the ability to do that um, I like the sighting setup on this gun it's simple it's got a steel rear, rear sight and then your front sight here is your fiber optic and I'm becoming more and more a fan of these fiber optic front sights because they're so easy to pick up so the white dot and the fiber combination um, you can pick it up really really fast as far as acquiring your um, target um, it says pretty decent trigger I'll talk about it at the range but uh, it's four and a half pounds is what I got off the uh, manual scale when I looked at this um, other items um, I don't really pay much attention to these but it does have a loaded chamber indicator when you do when you have a round in a chamber you can set a little slot right there that tips up slightly when there's a round in the chamber so obviously if it's flat like that that's their indication that you are clear 
if you look here at the back you'll see this little hole right here in the center um, once again of course you can see that we're clear completely here and when you do um, cycle the slide and you do have the weapon ready to fire you can see the pin so you can actually see this metal pin that sticks out the back uh, that's your ready to fire indication okay that your striker is cocked and ready to fire when you see that and of course when you do fire it goes away just like that so once again you can cock the weapon here you can see the pin showing and then of course when you cycle that it goes away so that's a clear indication whether it's ready to fire um, pretty good little feature set of course we mentioned that this one is uh, got the flat dark earth um, frame and then of course the slide is in black which is a pretty nice uh, looking setup there if you know anything about the XD series you know that they offer a lot of variety as far as barrel lengths and um, other features and uh, a lot of them are in black there's a few of them that are like this but that's your basic overview of your feature set on the XD40. And of course, Roy is going to show you the uh, uh, you know, basic procedure to you know be able to clean your weapon after you shoot it. On this one, it's pretty simple. We're going to go through, of course, our standard safety check here. Make sure you get your magazine out as usual and pull back there. You can see that we are empty and clear. You can see there's nothing in here. And um, while you've got it back and locked in this position, you can grab your takedown lever and just push it up just like that. And then you unlock the slide, pull the trigger, and the entire assembly comes forward just like that. You can set that down. And then, of course, when you look on the inside here, as usual, you've got your spring and your rod here um, together. You can take that and move that to the side for just a moment. And then, of course, you tip up, put your finger in here, and just tip up your barrel to get that loose, just like that. And you can move that out of the way. And of course, once you get to this point, um, I always um, advise people that when you've got to this point, um, the slide, of course, is going to move back and forth um, across the frame at these points that you can see here that go inside. So I always make a point to clean these parts really good, make sure you get all the grit and dirt from inside those grooves in the slide of course you know clean all this really good with uh, whatever cleaner fires your rocket there and um, i always like to apply just a little bit of oil to each one of these um, parts that the slide actually rides on and once again maybe one small drop of oil inside the works there and um, that's usually all i'm going to do because i don't want it to be all greasy and nasty and dripping everywhere and of course getting it back together is just the reverse you know you're gonna drop your barrel back in there flat part of the spring there the big end goes forward and then you've got a little notch that this pushes down and just falls right into and you'll know it's correct because from the side there it should be level and then you just line it back up with the notches and you pull it all the way back and lock the slide again. Then after you've done that, all you got to do is drop your takedown lever back into place, release your slide stop, and then just simply function check the weapon there. And you can see that everything is as it should be. So as far as the takedown procedure 
for the cleaning. It's pretty straightforward. It's very similar to many other firearms that you've seen as far as that location for the takedown lever and how it comes off. So, not bad. All right, well, let's talk about the range. Um, I had a lot of fun with this pistol at the range. And once again, I, I've mentioned that 40 caliber uh, firearms, I'm a fan. I've got many of them, and, and that's what I shot exclusively for a very long time. And this pistol right here actually shoots really, really well. Um, better than I would have thought, because I had my own preconceived notions um, about the XD because I'd never never shot one, never owned one. I wasn't really interested. I didn't even really have a reason. Um, there's many guns that have just never crossed my path because I looked at them and went, yeah, I've got something similar that does a good job. And you know, sometimes that's the way it goes. You just don't have a need for another gun that does the same thing. But I have to tell you, the four and a half pound trigger pull off this trigger is pretty reliable. Um, once again, let me get the mag out here and show you that we're clear so we can show you a little bit about how this trigger um, resets. So I've got my little four and a half pound trigger and then look at the reset. There we go. It's obviously not a super short reset trigger, but it's not bad. And Usually, when I'm looking at these type of firearms, you know, you get a lot of variance in how these triggers actually reset and uh, how much force it takes to get them to shoot. And this is a very consistent trigger. So out of the many things that I like about this um, firearm, the trigger is something that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and as usual, while we were on the range, we had several people around that were interested in the firearm as well. Um, so we let other people shoot it as well and get their opinion. And um, obviously, if you've never shot uh, 40 Smith & Wesson, it's a bit snappier, um, quite a bit so, than shooting, say, a 9mm in the same package. And um, I had that experience as well, but I have to be honest, it wasn't as bad as some others that I have. Uh, I've got a couple of 40s that are compacts that are... Um, that'll really wear you out. My P2000SK, I love that gun, but it'll wear you out if you shoot a few magazines through it. It just, you, you really feel it when you shoot it. And I love my little baby Glock, my 27, but it doesn't take too many magazines through that gun before it starts wearing me out too. The, I'm guessing, you know, the grip and maybe the firearm is managing the recoil a little bit better. But even using the standard magazine, the two-finger grip, um, this was actually very comfortable. I didn't get that stinging kind of snappy aftermath that I get from putting a few mags of uh, uh, 40 caliber ammunition down range. And then the other thing is, if you switch over to the you know, larger magazine here, it gets even better. I mean, this firearm is pretty well balanced with the flat magazine but if you put the large one in there like if you want to do you know extensive practice with the gun um, this is going to be better of course for a full grip on the firearm and um, like I say I shoot a number of different ways when I practice I shoot with two hands I shoot with you know one hand I I shoot with my off hand I, uh, I do all of that when I practice and the gun was very comfortable um, and I can also say that it was it was very reliable. Um, I only had one failure, and it wasn't the gun's fault. I was shooting some Blazer um, 40 caliber ammo, and I had a round that uh, didn't have a good crimp, and that round came apart. But the Winchester uh, ammo range ammo I used was good. The SMB ammo was perfect. I ran Golden Sabers, and I ran Hydra Shocks, and I ran some Corbon. Everything I ran through the pistol, um, it ate it flawlessly. And it was a pretty accurate firearm, too. Now, obviously, when you're shooting a 3-inch 40 Smith & Wesson, 
you're not going to get the same kind of accuracy that you do out of a longer barrel or with a round that's not as snappy but um, you can get pretty respectable groups out of this firearm with very little practice with it so I think even for a beginner um, they could do a good job with this right off the bat so as far as range performance goes um, it's got a great trigger it's comfortable in the hand even after you do a lot of shooting through it and of course if you use the extended magazine it's even more comfortable and it's probably a better choice for you know practice anyway if you want to change up and do a lot of different things with the firearm but good range results overall so what's it like to actually carry the Springfield XD40 Model 2 subcompact on the body well you know I'm a sucker for a good sticky holster and so without even really going to the chart I just grabbed one and stuck it right in there and the first thing I grabbed was a pretty good fit and um, like I said, once again, the reason I, I like these, um, and it's only for certain size guns, like this is a subcompact, um, most guns in that category, I will tend to favor a sticky holster because I can carry it in the waistband very easily. Once you have your belt tightened, you know, this material, it stays put, but you can still apply, you know, a little bit of force while it's in the waistband to change the cant, and there's different reasons I do that. Um, for me, I, I normally carry my weapon at 3 o'clock, and I usually have it canted just slightly forward. Um, when I get in the car, I will often cant it more just so the firearm isn't up against the seats, you know, um, especially my leather seats, and uh, because I don't want to damage them. And so I can push that forward, get that out of the way, and then when I get out, I can just simply take my finger and roll that right back into position. So... It's a secure way of holding the firearm that still lets you control how the firearm sits in the waistband. And it's not for everybody, but it's a, it's a good option. And it's also a good option if you're going to carry the firearm, you know, in a container or if you're going to have it, if you're going to have it in something else and you just want to make sure that you have the trigger covered and give it a little bit of, you know, safety and, um, and of course they make larger ones this is a really kind of a small one you can go up a size on this of course and cover a little bit more of this trigger guard area but that's the first one i grabbed just as an example but using the sticky um i carried this thing around i did two different experiments um, i carried it with the standard magazine and with the standard magazine and a sticky holster um it was just like carrying a baby Glock. I kind of forgot about it. I forgot it was there. Because the weight's about the same. And when I carry in a sticky in the waistband for this size firearm, um, it's not a big deal. I, I go about my business. I, di I didn't really have to change a whole lot of the cant when I got in and out of the car because it didn't stick out that far. Now, things did change a little bit when I carried it with the, the big magazine. Um, just because it's still sits in the waistband the same way but in order to keep this from showing under the garment I, I almost had to keep a little more cant in it to kind of keep this line under my shirt um, I was able to do a pretty good job with it um, wearing a t-shirt plus I was wearing an outer shirt um, I couldn't really see any printing and um, you know at the range I when we walked out I had some other people look at it and comment and they said they couldn't really tell a whole lot either but I could feel that little bit of extra bit um, up against my side and that's usually what it comes down to you know oftentimes when you put one of those extended magazines in there um, you will feel it when you're carrying the firearm around and like I say I'm perfectly happy to carry it with the nine round magazine just because it has a good feeling two finger grip so it's not like you know, it's not like when I'm holding this firearm that I don't feel like I have a good grip on it, whether it's a one-handed or two-handed grip. Um, the flat magazine does just fine. So it's going to be a personal choice, but it's extremely comfortable no matter which way you do it. For me, it's a little more comfortable using the standard um, capacity magazine, and I feel that 9 plus 1 rounds of... Uh, of ammunition is more than adequate in any situation anyway so it was good enough for me 
So overall impressions of the Springfield Armory XD40 Model 2 subcompact. Well, I think it's a really good firearm. And for those that want to say that the smaller pistols like the Hellcat and, you know, your 365 and these other guns. Um, for those that say there's not really a place for these kind of guns anymore, I'm going to have to disagree because I think those smaller guns are good. There is a place for them. But um, I really, uh, you know, most of the time, um, I usually carry a gun a little bit bigger than those tinier ones just because I feel like I can get a lot better grip, a lot more solid feel on a slightly larger gun with a bigger grip. Um, and it's got nothing to do with uh, with what caliber it is or, or any of the other features. It's just that there's a certain size that for me I'm comfortable with. And I like my 365 and I like my little Glock, you know, 43s and such. I think those are great guns. But I think that um, for me, most of the time, having a little bit, of, a little bit more gun in my hand feels a little bit better. And you know, and I do have a medium uh, to large hand. And if you have a a smaller hand, if you've got a you know uh, a much smaller hand, you may not uh, may not have as much interest in um, in one of these guns as you do those. But it certainly doesn't mean that the um, Thicker guns don't have a place because I think they, they surely do. It's got a good combination of features. You know, you've got accessory rail for lights and such. Um, it's got a great trigger. That four and a half pound trigger is very reliable and it's 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 repeatable. So you get a consistent feel off the trigger. Um, the sight picture is pretty good. Like I say, I love a good fiber optic sight. So it's a lot of fun to shoot. It's easy to pick up the front sight. So, you know, it's got some little quirky features that I like too, you know, it's a little firing pin, your little indicator there in the rear, the rate of fire indicator. I think that that's neat. Um, it's just a good shooting, comfortable firearm. There's not a lot of 40 caliber firearms that I own that I can shoot a lot of rounds through before my hand starts complaining. But this one does a really good job and that's even with the standard magazine. And of course, when you put the big boy in there, it gets even more comfortable. So I think no matter who you are, um, no matter what kind of experience that you have, if you're thinking about carrying a 40 Smith & Wesson um, for your concealed carry gun, and as far as that goes, um, this is a perfectly good gun, obviously, for anything else. I mean, um, you know, home defense, if you have a little, uh, you know, safe near the nightstand that you keep a pistol in and you want something like this, well, you know, keep the larger magazine in it and you get a little bit better capacity but uh, it's a good weapon for people of all experience you know ranges and if you like the 40 caliber round um, I think you would like the way this handles it if you've shot the 40 caliber before and you know what I'm talking about um, this does a good job of not wearing you out when you shoot it so I think it's a pretty good weapon it's got a pretty good feature set and the XDs, um, they've been around for a while, and I think they've got them about as trouble-free as they can get them. So I think they've been pretty reliable. And this one's been very reliable uh, so far. So overall, you know, i say it's a pretty good gun. Well, I guess that's going to do it. We, uh, we really do appreciate you joining us once again. And of course, once again, if uh, you've been joining us before and you haven't had a chance, you can sneak over to the lower right-hand portion of your screen there and hit that subscribe button. Or if you're on a mobile device, you want to roll down below the video and hit subscribe and hit the bell icon. It'll let you know when we do something new. Um, it helps us out tremendously, and, uh, and we really, really appreciate it. So we'll be back very soon with another video for you. And as always, um, we wish you all the best. Um, be safe out there. And um, we appreciate your support and we appreciate our sponsors supporting us. And, um, you know, this is what makes it all work. But we will be back very soon with another video. And until then, once again, be safe and we will be back soon. Thanks a lot.